Department. Uh, did Alan Estevez make it? Oh, there you go, Alan. Good to see you. Our next speaker is Alan Estevez, the former Assistant Secretary of Defense for Logistics and Readiness in the first Obama term, and the Principal Deputy Under Secretary of Defense at AT&L in the second Obama term. Alan is a longtime civil servant and supply chain expert at the Defense Department and a rare career government employee that was chosen for two Senate-confirmed jobs. He has his degrees from Rutgers and National Defense University. Alan, it's great to see you. Thanks for coming. Thank you. All right. And now I know we're really towards the end, so I will uh, try to change, change up a little bit uh, without completely repeating what I've heard everyone else saying. First of all, uh, I have to point out that I'm not an IT expert. You heard the jobs I had, so I'm going to come at this from an acquisition perspective. I'll ignore the supply chain side of it to some degree. I will say, Matt, that my wife rolled around laughing on the floor when I told her I was going to come talk about <laughs> IT modernization for FedGov. Uh, but with that said, I do have a lot of experience both buying and implementing uh, tools, and uh, I did draw on the experts in Deloitte where I now work. Uh, to help me on this. Starters, all IT is not the same, and I think we need to recognize that. So implementing Joint Strike Fighter, which is a bucket of software that flies and drops kinetic uh, tools on something, uh, is different than implementing Nuclear Command and Control, which is also critical mission software uh, that allows the President to launch, uh, to defend the United States, versus implementing SAP. Uh, at Defense Logistics Agency. They're all ones and zeros, but they have different flavors of how you got to implement that. And I think you need to recognize that. Uh, so, you know, embedded weapon system software has to go along with the design and engineering of the weapon that it's embedded in. That's not to say, again, that it, we shouldn't be looking at modern tools and how you upgrade that software, how you implement that software. Uh, these differences also drive differences in how we buy. Uh, so, you know, David uh, Bertel mentioned the FAR earlier. Uh, the 5000, the DOD 5000, uh, the tool that DOD acquisition uh, folks use, uh, needs to be flexible. And in fact, scarily enough, it actually is flexible. And the FAR is actually flexible. What is not flexible is the people using those tools. And the reason they're not flexible is a risk equation, and I'll talk about that in a couple of moments. Uh, now, so we've also talked about OTA, Southern Transaction Authority, the new acquisition instrument du jour, at least in the Department of Defense for buying something. If you're not buying it with an OTA, you must feel left out. Now, the reality is OTAs are a great tool. Uh, and again, there's a small group of people who really know how to buy with an OTA, and there's a whole bunch of people trying to figure that out really fast. But not everything should be bought with an OTA. When you go down that path, you're going to end up in a train wreck at the end of the day. Uh, so in order to figure that out, A, you have to have an understanding of what you're buying. You have to have an understanding of what's out there in the real world, not inside the insular Washington world. I note that we're a bunch of people sitting here in coats and ties talking about implementing technology. Uh, this would not be the look and feel of Silicon Valley, I can assure you, if we were doing that. Uh, but you do have to have an understanding, and that's where government kind of gets itself lost. Uh, and there are people, I'm hoping, uh, and I've seen them and heard from a bunch of them today, and I've worked with many of them, who do know how to do that. Uh, but not everyone is that expert, uh, so there's training and there's a people aspect of this. Last in the opener, is, and there's been a discussion of cyber ad nauseum here, uh, but cyber threats do need to be considered. And yes, banks and uh, energy gets attacked. Uh, United States Transcom gets attacked like every second uh, on its cyber threat, and its commercial partners that it does business with get attacked almost every second. Because if you can figure out how Transcom's moving, you can figure out how we supply, deploy and supply the force, and it gives you an enemy an advantage. Uh, I already mentioned of hacks, uh, the GAO report on weapon systems. This is new that term. So that GAO report, I will say, and I'm two years dated, uh, 
did allows so many GAO reports does restated the obvious, what was already obvious to folks inside the Department of Defense, that weapon systems also need, need to be protected. It's not just about protecting the network. Hacking into a Patriot radar can lead to a really bad, bad end. Um, or hacking into a joint strike fighter for that matter. So there is focus on that inside the department, but again, uh, it's bringing in the full bear of tools and the full bear of America's industrial might. And America's industrial might does not just rely on the normal companies that the Department of Defense buys from. It has to go to my point, Silicon Valley and others, the whole idea behind DUI, to draw on the full might of America's capability in, in protecting itself. All right, so let me jump into a couple of thoughts on buying IT right. And I'm going to start off, buying IT technology cannot be all about risk avoidance. It has to be about figuring it out fast, being willing to fail fast, and then doing mitigation after the fact. Now that is easy for me to say. I have sat in this building numbers of times, sitting at a table like this with my hands folded being questioned by people about how come you're so stupid and this thing failed. And the same will happen to the fail fast mantra unless there's a change on both sides of that equation. So it sounds great, go forth and do, go buy it with an OTA, we need to be buying at the speed of need. And then when the first major oopsie comes along, uh, people are going to be sitting at a table like that saying, what were you thinking? And it's the people's money, you have to understand that. But if you want to get to the right answer, you have to move past that. And it has to be on the part of the members that are live in this building, as well as the risk tolerance of uh, the people buying. Contracting officers are by nature risk adverse. And unless, uh, and I'll give a little contracting uh, 101 here. Contracting is the business of the leader, not the business of the contracting officer. So leadership needs to take ownership and doing that, the same thing applies in IT buying. DOD organizations need to be adaptable when buying software, and we heard that from the SAP uh, point earlier. Uh, and I think those lessons have been learned, but lessons learned and lessons forgotten are often the case inside the, the government, partly because of rotation and movement of people. So if you're going to go out and buy the COTS business product, and yes, you have to comply with the legislative and the uh, compliance requirements, but it can't be I'm going to change this because this is the way I like to do business. You have to be adaptable and flexible when you're implementing those products. Buying software to modify it generally is the road to ruin. Buying uh, commercial and commercial derivative IT products, you need to be able, you need to be ready to go out and find and work with the companies that are best in class that do that. And again, that may not be the normal look around the beltway. And you know, I've heard a lot of new companies and uh, uh, progressive companies in this audience uh, you know, speaking to us today. So I don't want to throw aspersions on beltway. It's where the government is and it's where the dollars from the government are going to fall to. But you have to go out and find the companies that do this in the commercial sector that are best in class and then figure out the structure in order to get at those companies. And that could be an OTA, and again, the floor is flexible, and it's not always that you have to get the cost and price in those, David does. <laughs> All too often, though, again, I go back to that risk equation with the contracting officers. So it's a mix. It's full industrial might. It's traditional, non-traditional companies understanding what their capabilities are and finding the right companies for the right task, and then figuring out the right mechanism to go get at them at the speed you need to go get at easier said than done, but that's what has to be done, and that's what best in class is. And then DOD needs to be willing to, to figure out how to work with those companies. And I just got to think about, uh, you know, I'll, I'll use a Deloitte example. Uh, so we were under contract to help someone in their migration to the cloud, and what we did, frankly, is we went to the commercial sector of Deloitte and brought in the commercial team, gave them a federal security guy who understood the cyber requirements of the federal government to work with that migration team 
to help do that. And that was a much better way of doing it because we had people who were doing it at speed in the commercial sector and then just applying that to the, to the government. But the government needs to be willing to want to go that way. And they're not always. So there's an education component. And the last thing I'm going to talk about, I'm trying to catch this up a little bit here, uh, and Kerry Smith talked about this, people matter in this equation. And it's not just uh, the CIOs. CIOs are important. CIOs are good. In the commercial sector, when you're out there implementing a new capability, it's the leadership that gets educated on the technology, not just the CIO and I'm going to walk away from it and worry and they'll worry about it for me. So it's tech understanding across the leadership, it's across the board, and it's, uh, it's complete education. And then the workforce matters. You need to understand the people who are going to be using these tools. And the reality is the workforce is probably going to be more tech savvy than the leaders. Certainly that's true in the Department of Defense and the military force. The military force is a young force that comes with an understanding of what they do on tech. And they get inside the, the military and they say, WTF? What am I doing here? I don't know what this pencil thing is that Berto was talking about is. <laughs> I do that with my phone every day while I'm sleeping. So if you're going to implement the tool the old way, the force is going to say, I don't know why you're doing that. That's stupid. So getting a feel and an understanding from the people and the workforce that you are going to be working with and that's going to have to use the tools that you're implementing is as important as anything else. And I'm going to leave it at that. Uh, that's a perspective of a mix of my year and a half in the commercial sector and my 36 years of uh, laboring in the department trying to either buy this technology, implement this technology, uh, or tell people that they're not doing it right, uh, which occasionally <laughs> had to happen uh, from, from my experience. Thank you.